welcome to this episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. I'm Taylor Burton Edwards, Liturgy Man, your Director of Worship Resources from Discipleship Ministries. I am your apportionment dollars at work to help you strengthen worship and the leadership of worship where you are. This is part two of our two-part series on presiding at the Lord's table. And today we are in Craig Chapel at Drew University Theological School, where uh, my class for this summer has agreed to uh, participate in helping all of us learn the basic gestures of presiding at the Lord's table. So you'll see all of us doing this together. There are really only three very basic gestures that you must do, that are helpful, most helpful to do, that represent the consensus of Christian practice across time and centuries, and in terms of presiding at the Lord's table. Simply follow us and repeat after us. Again. Again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. The entirety of the great thanksgiving from that point forward can be done in this gesture. There is no other gesture, this is the gesture called Orans, the standard praying gesture in early Christianity. There is no other gesture that you absolutely have to do. And we really encourage that you invite the entire congregation, as my entire class here, our entire class here is doing, to join you in this simple gesture indicating prayer that we find Christian art examples of dating back to the second century so that our bodies are aligned with the bodies of Christians across the century as we gather at this Lord's table, where we pray with saints and angels and all creation, giving our glory to God as we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving together for all that God has done to save us and renew all things in Christ. Again. The Lord be with you. So Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. If you are going to add any additional gestures in this prayer, the one, the first one I would consider suggesting that you add is something at the part of the prayer known as the epiclesis, where we call upon the word epiclesis means call upon. We call upon the Holy Spirit. We call upon the, 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 the God to pour out the Holy Spirit on us and on, uh, on the gifts that we have offered, the bread and the cup. And so here's how that goes. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Very simple gestures, simply holding your hands over or touching the bread and the cup at those points where the, the body and blood of Christ or the bread and the cup are indicated. And then returning to this simple posture of orangs. There are two other optional gestures you may use that are designated in the rubrics of the Book of Worship. One of them is at the part of the prayer referred to commonly as the Sanctus, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might. The rubric before that says the pastor may lower hands. That gesture is intended to be something like this, still indicating that this is prayer rather than some other action that isn't prayer. It is prayer. So, <coughs> so with your with all creatures on earth and all the company of heaven, we join their unending hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. So, this gesture might also be appropriate for the doxology 
the giving of glory to God at the end of the great thanksgiving, in which we give thanks and praise uh, through Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit to what all, all that God has doing, and we give that glory to God at the very end of prayer, this simple gesture of prayer. The third gesture you, might, you may wish to add, but really do not need to, and a number of liturgical scholars would encourage you not to because it reflects uh, much earlier than an evil practice that we no longer really need, is the lifting of the bread and the lifting of the cup at the words of institution. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Very simple gesture. Simply take the whole pattern of bread and lift it. Lift it, I recommend you slightly below eye level. Remember, you are not talking to the congregation. This is prayer. And everyone is praying these words, even if they're not saying them at this time, it's prayer. Place it gently down, and likewise, lifting the cup, gave thanks to you. You might lift it up a little higher in that language. And then placing it down when you're finished. And then back to the lungs. The very basic posture is once again the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and ever to give thanks to our God. I hope this has been helpful. Remember, you can always contact me, worship at umcdiscipleship.org, through our UMC Worship Facebook group, or just drop a line here on this page. Perhaps your question or comment may become the basis of a future episode of Q&A with Liturgy. The peace of Christ be always with you.